Hi YouTube land and welcome to my third Animate CC tutorial. Um, now we're actually going to get into doing some actual animations. This one is going to be fairly simple. It's going to be a bouncing ball. Why a bouncing ball? Because it's so easy. Um, but it does allow me to show off some of the principles of this. So we're going to start off with a simple circle. I'm going to make it a round circle. I'm also going to modify the properties of this so that, double click on it so I can edit it, I'm going to make this a colour. Give me a colour. Alright, since it's not going to play nice, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to select the circle and I'm going to modify the properties to start with. So we're going to have a blue bouncing ball. No, red. Red's a better one. What you'll notice is that when I drew, drew the ball up, you get a little circle under my crosshairs. If I push it one direction or the other, I just get an ellipse but I get a larger circle under the mouse pointer if I want to draw a circular object. Anyhow, back to the bouncing ball. First thing we do is I'm going to modify this and convert it to a symbol. Now since this is a movie clip style symbol, I'm going to give it the prefix MC and I'm going to call it ball. This is the naming convention I'll be using throughout. So if it's a movie clip, I'll label it MC underscore whatever the object is. Um, if it's a graphic, probably GFX. And if it's a button, BTN. So, but that's just a convention. I use whatever it is, be consistent. So, here is the bouncing ball. I'm going to also come in with a second layer. Now, the first layer is the, we'll call it the bounce layer. And the second layer is the ground. So, I'm going to take the ground and put it below the bounce. The ground layer is basically what's going to be the ground. And it will not be red. So double clicking on it, I'm going to modify that and change it to a fairly ubiquitous green. If I wanted to, I could probably even use a little bit of texture to make it more interesting. And make it also roughly fit my stage. Center it, enlarge it out a bit. So everything when free transforming rotates around this radio button, so wherever you put it. So that's now done. I have a ground, I have an object. What you'll notice is I've made the uh, square that is the ground slightly larger on the edges than the stage. Basically because the stage is what you see, everything beyond that is irrelevant. And the default stage size you can see over here. Size, width, height. So 550 by 2400 pixels running at 24 frames per second. So the ground is done. And I'll extend this out to 100 frames, and I'm going to insert a frame. This means that my ground layer, and I'll lock it, so I cannot modify it, is consistent, does not change it, it's always the ground. Getting back to the ball layer, so jumping to the first frame of my timeline, we have my ball. Now, what I need to be able to do with this is... On frames 20, 60, and 100, the ball will strike the ground. Now, I'm not going to make it touch this top surface. I'm going to make it strike a consistent point about there, I guess. So, jumping to frame 100, I'm going to also insert a frame so my ball exists. Now, the animation part of this is actually quite easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on any part of the bounce frame right click and go create motion tween. What this does is converts this object, the objects in this layer, the bounce layer, which in this case is just my ball, into something I can animate. So jumping to frame 20, you can see that there, so to frame 20, I'm going to place my ball, no not the radio button, whoops, undo, select the ball and place it about on the ground. And then I'm going to jump to frame 40 and move it along a little bit. No, it was 60. Whoops, wrong bit. So undo again, jump to frame 60. Move it along again. So what I'm looking here is, this is going to be the peak of the bounce. Hits the ground here, will peak somewhere over here, and hit the ground again here. So I want that distance to be consistent when I jump to frame 100. So the distance from the peak to the bottom is is one length and here from one bounce touch to second bounce touch it will also be consistent so I'll move it and the aim is to get that consistency and distance so that's the first part of getting the bounce right 
The second is on frame 40. I want this ball to peak a little, about a third lower or a quarter lower than its initial starting point to give that consistent idea of bounce. Now I can do it that way as you've just seen, grabbing it and just lifting it up on the keyframe I want. Or an actual better technique <coughs> is to grab the curve and slide it up and pick a point that feels about right. And this gives me something that you can see the, the curves are looking pretty good. And this is what I'm really aiming for is to get the curves of my bounce so that it, it as it bounces it decreases lower and lower and that sort of stuff. And I'm only doing a hundred frame bounce for this one and that's all you'll need to do. And this is basically a fairly good bouncing animation as it stands. There are a couple of things we can do to improve it though. On frame 19, I'm going to insert a keyframe for everything. And again, on frame 21, I'm going to insert a keyframe for all. What this does is records all the critical information about the ball bounce because when it hits the ground, what I want it to do is do a little thing called squash and stretch. And this is basically just a little bit of using the free transform. So if I zoom in and grab the radio button and push it to the ground, all I'm going to do is just get it to squish down a little bit. So what you can see is that there's this little distortion as it hits the ground. And I can then repeat that for frame six, uh, 59, 61. And again for frame uh, 99. And this adds the idea of squash and stretch to our animation. So that as the ball does it, and you may barely even see this, as the ball bounces through this sequence of things, it squashes, it distorts a little bit, and it tricks the eye into giving it this idea of weight and substance, which is a very important thing for animation. That ends what I'm talking about for this one. Thank you for your time, and please give the bouncing ball animation a go. Thank you.